Good evening, my dear friends, and welcome to our ninth day of our Advent Retreat. And it's so wonderful to have you join me. And I see that we have logged in this evening. Just bear with me a moment while I just double check on who's logged in. We have Sister Sue, we have Margaret, and we have Victor, dear brother Paul, we have Ronnie Vecca, and whoever else is here but not logged in, on behalf of our community, may I welcome you to this table of love. I hope you can hear me and see me okay, and the reason why I mention this is because we've been having a lot of um, intermittent power cuts today due to the severe flooding nearby but blessings. And I would like to light this light and dedicate it to each one of you for giving up your time to come and walk with me to Bethlehem with Mary and Joseph. So in the name of our Father, Mother God who creates life, in the name of their Son, Jesus the Cosmic Christ, who loves life, in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire of life. In the name of Gaia, our Earth Mother, and Mother Mary, our Heavenly Mother, who both nurtured the divine life in all lives. And in the name of all faith traditions and none, you are welcome because we are all children of the one true source that has many names and the name I use is God. So welcome. First, I would like to play this piece of music to you after I have read the introduction for day nine from the wisdom from St. Francis of Assisi. And today the theme is in praise of God's goodness. And that's very Franciscan. All powerful, most holy, most high, supreme God, all good, supreme good, totally good. You who alone are good, may we give you all praise, all glory, all thanks, all honor, all blessing, and all good. So be it, so be it. Amen. And that's from St. Francis himself. The praise is to be said at all hours. And now just sit back and relax and enjoy this piece of music.
like to read for you, if I may, Living the Wisdom of Francis and the theme with open hands from Thomas of Solano on the second life of Francis we read, no one desired gold as much as he desired poverty and no one was so careful in guarding this treasure as he was careful in guarding this pearl of the gospel. When we pray, we should occasionally cup our hands and hold them before God. This gesture represents the openness of the heart. An openness of the heart that demonstrates our complete trust in a loving, selfless, reverent God, a being who knows you by name. Identifying with the humble and poor Jesus, Francis opened his own hands and his heart. He became a beggar, like the ones he saw along the wayside and trusted completely in divine providence. One day during Mass, Francis heard the reading from Matthew in which Christ tells his disciples to go on the road and preach, to preach the gospel without money in their belts, without shoes or sandals and a staff. Francis shouted with enthusiasm, this is what I desire with all my heart. And he proceeded to follow Christ's instructions to the letter. The words of the gospel struck his heart with full force because he realized that this was Christ himself embraced poverty, emptying himself for the sake of love. Should not he, Francis, follow the same path and espouse this path for others? Francis' appreciation and understanding of poverty took time, just as it would for anyone. He embarked on a spiritual journey at the prompting of a voice of love, a voice within his being. 
Describing France's growth, Dorothy Day observes, it was only later that he came to love Lady Poverty. He took it little by little. It seemed to grow on him. First he had to overcome his fear of lepers and then let go of his comfortable, secure life. But this process only awakened him to his deeper attachment to personal dreams, dreams of success, prestige and power. In time he explored the secret corners of his heart and realized that he must also confront tendencies towards pride, anger and other habits that were preventing his inner growth. By progressively releasing himself from attachments, Francis discovered the freedom to trust his God, a God with his whole being. He opened hands, symbolic of his uncluttered heart, extended themselves towards the God on whom he truly depended for his existence and his happiness. He could no longer imagine giving wealth or any created thing an absolute value. To Francis, only God was absolute. Lady Poverty, as he loving referred to her, had taught him a way to overcome worries and anxieties and had given him the strength to surrender his life to God and to put himself in God's care. More importantly, Lady Poverty had revealed to him the bond he had with all human beings and with all creatures. Do we not all share our dependence on God? Are we not all called to praise the Creator. And there's a little footnote. What makes you most anxious? Practice handing it over to God again and again until its grip over you lessens. Remember that growth is measured in many small steps. And there's a beautiful little prayer from St. Clair. O oh, blessed poverty who bestows eternal riches on those who love and embrace her. O oh, holy poverty, to those who possess and desire you, God promises the kingdom of heaven. Let's reflect on those words. Lady Poverty. Well, in the journey of the Holy Family to Bethlehem, there is witness of Lady Poverty in how Joseph and Mary presented themselves to you, you who have joined them, not as an escort, but as a friend. And many today find it difficult to understand the implications about Lady Poverty. I remember here in 2007, we had our first trustees meeting and we advised a dear friend who was so knowledgeable in such matters to come and just oversee our first meeting. There were eight of us gathered at this table. All was going very well until my friend opened her mouth and said, many will walk away from you because of the word Francis. And I looked at my dear friend, Sister Teresa, and I said, what does she mean? And she was asked to explain and she said, my understanding in the corporate world is that the name Francis conjures poverty and people today don't do poverty. 
and I would suggest you drop the name Franciscan. Well, I was shocked, and sadly, they took a vote, and poor Sister Therese and I were outnumbered. And we left the meeting devastated, but we remembered the wise old saying from a brother monk shared with me on the day of my profession on the 8th of December, 1968, 49 years ago tomorrow, when I dedicated my life to God. And it's so easy for others to destroy God's vision for his people. And the last few years have been turbulent years, like the journey of Mary with child and Joseph to Bethlehem. Nothing of God comes easy. Visions given by God to you and to me are always tested first and you will encounter opposition in your faith journey. You will have many devout Christians criticize you for being so austere with yourself. I've had many of my Catholic friends laugh at me for daring to live the contemplative life. What's the point, they say. Why shut yourself away when you can do so much good with your life? But what they forget, I gave 38 years of my active ministry, caring for the sick and latterly as a senior nurse for the dying. So it was my time to listen to my inner voice and make time, like Mary did with her sister Martha, to make time for the Lord to speak with me, to make time to listen to that inner voice. Because I spent too many years ignoring that voice through wanting to help other people. So come with me now on this amazing journey, a journey of a lifetime, a journey that can never be repeated. For this journey is unique. This journey is special because this journey at the end, at the birth of the Christ, there will be a rebirthing in your heart where I promise you, I promise you this in the name of God. In spirit, you will see the face of God. You will behold the face of love when you go into your meditation, as we will on Christmas Eve. And you will be in that nativity and you will see the Christ child and you will hold him because he holds you now out of love, not fear. There are times when I feel so saddened by my own church on how in history it has behaved towards the children of God. But we have examples of God's love for the children of God. When in the 12th century, Jesus touched the heart of an outrageous young man who was full of pomp and splendor and ego and his name was Francis Bernardo. He became Francis of Assisi. And that young man did not establish a religious order. He did not build churches except San Damiano from its ruins. He just went about his daily business as you do, as I do. He didn't profess to have a desire to become a pope or a bishop or even a priest. He was never ordained a priest. He was also Friar Francis, Brother Francis. But his charisma, his integrity, his honesty, and his love for people challenged the might of Rome within the Catholic Church. And how God used a simple man 
a humble man. So we should never underestimate those who've been called to the hermitic or contemplative life. It is not an easy life. It has many temptations, trust me. I get caught off guard so many times when I watch the world news and you see these adverts for these exotic holidays and lying there and sunning yourself and going for a swim. Oh, how I would love to go for a swim, but I made a choice and I'm honoring my choice as hard as it is. It's not a burden and I do not wish you to feel sorry for me because I have found something. I have found something, but it's taken many years of suffering and we have an old saying back in Ireland. I've fallen over many suitcases and handbags and times I didn't know whether I was Arthur or Martha. But through real suffering, through a mental health breakdown, 18, 19 years ago when my dear brother Monk died, we were like blood brothers when he died at 42 in Manchester of cancer and I was a senior nurse on night duty and I came all the way from North Wales, driving like a maniac. Normally the journey can take two and a half hours. I think I did it in one hour and 15 minutes. And I missed his death by five, 10 minutes. I was devastated, but happy for him because he had so much intractable pain. But wherever we were in our monastic life, we always laughed, <laughs> but they would never let us stay in a community together because we caused mayhem with laughter and giggling. But Eddie touched many lives through his smile, through his smile. And God is touching you now to come into your heart and to listen to a positive voice, not the voice as I got as a young boy growing up in Catholic Ireland. You're a sinner. You're a bad son, so you'll never get to heaven. Even in the monastery, we had all that negative theology. You're a sinner. You're evil. You've got to kneel on stones. You've got to flagellate your body every weekend and on the first Friday you have to kneel in front of your community and confess your faults if you broke a cup or you used the wrong stairs or you had to go to the lavatory during the night and get a penance and usually it was to kiss the feet of the professed monks and some of them, oh, they never even washed their feet but that isn't spirituality that's male ego gone sour. And I've had to learn what is the difference between religion and spirituality as you must. And I believe now that religion is for those who live in fear of hell, whatever hell is. And those who are, believe in spirituality, they've come through hell to find a loving God who doesn't condemn but who loves. Advent is about finding who you are, finding your inner child, embracing your inner child, embracing your woundedness and allowing Mother Mary to be your mother. Allow her to hold you, to caress you and to whisper the words of her son into your ear. I am so thankful to be a Franciscan because we have such a love of the Mother of God. As Francis did, so now, let us join Mary and Joseph. Let us be still with them. And let us enjoy being with them. May I turn out the spotlights? There we go. You and I are delighted to be here because
because the presence of God is here, because God is present. And where God is present, all is well. And I forgive the lights blinking, but now I think we've solved it. We're privileged because we, you and I were called by name. Never ever doubt that. You may not be feeling 100%. You may be feeling that you've come through a bad patch with religion. You may have experienced a negative interpretation about God. I was petrified of the Father God, only because as a young boy, I had a beautiful father to the eyes of the world, but he was demanding and vitriolic and abusive. Be still and embrace the Father who is a loving Father and he loves you too. Bearing in mind it took me 55 years to find him and explain to me why I lived in fear of him. And Mary and Joseph are sat under a beautiful palm tree and you can hear a herd of camels nearby grunting and growling. And interestingly, what they're doing, they're making you welcome. They're making you welcome. So be still and experience the love that is here between Mary and Joseph. And they're sat quietly having chamomile tea to help Mary. And you are sat there with them and a fire has been lit. And the fire is sending out a beautiful warmth to all three because it's now approaching dusk. There's a chill in the air, but the stars are beginning to appear. And you look at Mary with such tenderness just a young girl in her teens and her abdomen is getting bigger and bigger by the day and you look at her gently resting her delicate hands on her abdomen and there's Joseph an older man by many years who's caressing her he lifts her into his arms and forms the position of like an armchair and he holds his young bride aware that she's struggling and as you look on you decide to come near and you say to Mary Mary would you allow me massage your feet with holy oil and she smiled so you found an old towel and you found some olive oil on the donkey and you brought the olive oil and you lifted your hands to God and you just said bless these hands and bless this oil for I am anointing the feet of the mother of my God and a silence came over you the stillness and the peace and you gently lift up her right leg and you place it on your knees because you are kneeling down and you gently draw the oil and massage her lower leg and feet and you repeat this for about 15 minutes and you can see that Mary is relaxing to the extent that she's going to sleep. And you fold the towel around the right foot with the oil and you proceed to go to the left foot 
and you repeat the same process. But you do it with such love. You do it with such gentleness. And now you do both feet together, holding them and gently massaging them. And now you bow down and you kiss the feet of the Blessed Mother. And suddenly you can see the child in her womb smiling at you. The infant in her womb is looking at you, smiling gratitude for daring to do this to the Mother of God, a mother who is weary, who is frightened, and who is anxious, never having given birth before, and you have performed the most beautiful task that was never even asked of you, but you volunteered. And you place your hands over Mother Mary's feet and you say a prayer. And the prayer is simply from your heart, from Francis. Almighty God, in this season in which you performed your most wondrous work of assuming human flesh, my heart stirs as I lift up my voice in humble praise of your goodness and greatness. And I praise you in the womb of this blessed mother. And Joseph looks on with so much love for you. And you look at him again and you say, may I anoint your feet with the oil. And he said, yes. Whereas before, several days ago, he said, no, no fuss, I'm a man. And he allowed you anoint his feet. And you prayed a simple prayer at the end. And you thanked the Father, Mother, God for this gentle man, this quiet man who oozed spirituality. No words, but whose energy, whose presence said it all. He was a true hermit, a true contemplative, but he radiated joy in his silence and in the love he demonstrated to the young Mary. And you sit there quietly watching Joseph sleeping away under the stars and young Mary has been wrapped up nice and warm and she's in the arms of her beloved Joseph. And there's a bright star, the star of Bethlehem, the star of David, shining on all three of you. And you feel the love of God piercing your heart, thanking you for allowed to be yourself, to be who you truly are the compassionate one, the humble one. As you take a deep breath, you are breathing in the very love of this holy family for you. And in your out breath, you are releasing gratitude to them for allowing them walk with you and speak with you. And as you breathe in again, you breathe in the wonderful memory you will treasure, that as you anointed the feet of Mary, 
the unborn child Jesus, the one they call, will call Emmanuel, smiling at you. And in your outbreaths, you bless creation. You bless the gift of creation for allowing you to be here in the cathedral of God, the landscape. And suddenly, the desert animals begin to appear, the desert rabbits and hares. A young camel breaks away from the herd and comes and joins the donkey and they gather around you and there is such love from the animal kingdom. Hold these memories, treasure these memories because these memories are divinely guided and shared from a selfless heart to your heart. Because you too are an anointed one. You too have been called by God to be an ambassador of peace from where you are. To hold this beautiful earth and all of creation in silent prayer and breathe out love to the people of God, many of whom have lost their way, but in time they will find it through your love, through your prayer. Lord, your mother Mary and her yes to God's request is central to the Advent mystery. Help us to become her children and yours so we, we may be enveloped in the confidence of being truly loved and cared for by you both. Make it possible for us to say yes to your invitations no matter how reluctantly we may do so. Amen. And Francis guides us into a, an Advent action for the next coming hours. And he says, on a slip of paper, write out, I praise you, O Lord, for, and mention, and list three things for which you praise God. Use the paper as a bookmark in this book during these seasons of Advent and Christmas. You may place it in your prayer journal, writing your comments of the retreat and whatever spirit is shared with you. On a slip of paper, write out, I praise you, O Lord, I praise you, O Lord. I praise you, O Lord, for all gathered here, for making this Advent so humbling and so special for me. And from my heart, I bless you. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this night and on every human family the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the animal kingdom. Be in your heart this night, this day, for the rest of your life. As I blow out this votive lamp, I blow the peace and love of God to you. 
Amen. Good night and God bless you. And please say a little prayer for the people of Cumbria and Lancashire who are really having it tough at this hour where many thousands are without power, without their own home, where all their earthly possessions have been so severely damaged through flooding. Just say a little prayer for them. Thank you.